Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Metal Command Podcast. Tony here with you, and today I am bringing you an interview with myself and Sasha Gerstner from Halloween. Seems like yesterday this guy joined the band, but it was like 20 years ago now. And I'll be honest with you, folks. This guy has contributed a lot of great stuff to the band over the years uh, when they brought him in as a guitar player. And watching him on stage with Waikie is, you know, the musical chemistry is, has always been great between those guys. And then when you watch him on stage with Waikie and Kai, it's just an amazing thing to watch live. So uh, Sasha's a great songwriter. He's definitely a phenomenal photographer. In fact, I think the first discussion we ever had, you know, one of the first discussions we had was about photography and overall very very talented artist so with that said check out the interview with myself and sasha if you like what you see and hear please like and subscribe to the channel so uh it's great to have you on my show finally um, after all this time and and uh welcome to the metal command and uh so you just did a tour it seemed pretty successful and how things how did things go for you on the tour you just pretty much finished oh yeah well i'm um, very overwhelming because um after this whole pandemic thing we we didn't expect um that touring you know we, we, we saw a lot of bands canceling shows and, and stuff and we had to postpone our tours as well mm -hmm. so and then um having these kind of shows was was kind of unexpected you know um, especially in in, in uh, South and Central America, you know, um, the whole Latin American shows were overwhelming. Especially with shows in in Chile and Colombia, yeah, being more than uh, ten thousand people, you know, it's it's great, crazy, you know, for us playing these arenas still um, after a pandemic like this, you know. Yeah. yeah so very overwhelming and 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 very grateful to to do that yeah. you know it's interesting because it seems to be more difficult for bands to tour the cost of everything has gone way up and mm -hmm. you know exactly if, and what's really been difficult is that and then you know one of the things that i've seen is people are canceling shows partially because you know every band most bands weren't touring for two years now everybody's trying to do it at once and people only have so mm -hmm. much money. So when you get 10 bands coming in a week, they have to, you don't really get much of a pre-sale. You don't know what's going to show up and what's not, plus yeah. the cost of everything. And and you seem to, you, you guys seem to really have weathered that storm, as we say here, pretty well, because I don't know, I'm looking at some of these photos and videos and you have quite a few people showing up to see you. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's what I was saying. It's it's It was pretty much insane. We didn't expect it to 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 go that way and sure. may, maybe you know maybe maybe the, the album we put out helped as well you know it was a very successful album yeah. and um that that might have helped um as well and and what i figured is with a lot of bands that i'm also observing um um time is a is a big factor how 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 long are you around uh, what is the body of your work you've you've done over the years and mm -hmm. and now with a band like halloween that is around for such a long time um it was always ups and downs of course like like in any relationship or in any anybody's everybody's life you know lives um, it's it's always ups and downs you have in your in your lives and and also with with a band career it's the same thing but basically if you would if you would like draw a line it was always going up over like when you see the whole body of work and the whole uh, history of the band sure. it was always going up you know and and so i think time helps as well you know like having consistent work and consistent um good albums i think like of course been notch here and there but i think that helps like having a huge amount of of work done and 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 a stable fan base and especially i have the feeling within the metal scene you have different sorts of metal fans as well you know it's like it's not like there's like one metal scene after all not not like it was when i was was a young kid you know um yeah um so it's it's a lot of like split um scenes within the metal scene and 
And I have the feeling that because Halloween is is still a rock and roll band, um, there are a lot of rock and roll songs we're playing as well, not only metal songs. You know, we we probably we're combining people from from different um, sorts of of metal genres as well, like fans um, who would who would be into thrash metal or or a death metal would also um, come to a Halloween show to have a good time, you know. And and then you have rock fans who um, love the ballads and the rock songs and and they can dig into metal as well a little bit. So um, I have the feeling that we're combining a lot of people in our shows, you know, and, and having a great party going on. And yeah, maybe you that know, helps as well, you know. You know, I, I, I have actually... Everything is there. Maybe it's just bullshit. Probably I don't know. It's uh, I have no clue. But that's what I, what I, I was observing, and, and I think maybe it's the case. You know? I think that with social media and with you know you have all this access to music like Spotify and everything. I think people have branched out a little more than they used to. I know what you're talking about. I mean, you and I are pretty much the same age. And when we were younger, you had the death metal crowd, you had the power metal crowd, you had the thrash metal crowd. It was like Mm -hmm. a separate thing. And when you go to shows now, I see the same, I can see the same people into completely different kinds of bands. And my son is mm-hmm. like that. My son actually is a huge death metal fan. He likes Halloween. He likes all these different oh, yeah. bands. And how old is your son? He's 16. Oh, yeah. yeah. He has the same yeah, birthday. Yeah. <laughs> he has the same birthday it's as a- Andy, as funny as that is. That's funny. Yeah, actually, you know, I, I think that's a time where you, where you would explore different kinds of music and then mm-hmm. also being 16 when when i was young you know i wasn't only in in metal either it was more people were more down to one music style back then and and i i wasn't and i uh, and that's what i like about the time right now is that a lot of people are into different types of music you know i i would mm-hmm. see i would see fans with a depeche mode or 30 seconds to mass shirt appearing at a Halloween concert, you know, mm-hmm. um, which wasn't common when I joined the band 20 years ago, you know. Um, it's it's broken up, you know. People are listening to playlists and would listen to different kind of sorts of music. And, and I, I like that, you know. I, I think it's, it's very open-minded and it's about the music that's touching you, you know. And, and so I, I see that in, in our crowd that it's not only so to say metal crowd it's just people who are loving rock music you know and 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 loving the rock and roll vibe and and so and maybe that helps as well with our shows because we we transport that feeling you know it's for uh, i had one once a talk with hansi uh, from from blind guardian and and he he was telling me about his experience when halloween appeared and they were just starting out as well you know and 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 he told me it's it's very interesting to observe for him because Brand Guardian is like very constructed, you know, everything is like very thought through and, 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 and he said like probably Halloween is the only band in that genre that is still more rock and roll than everybody else in that type of like power metal, speed metal genre, you know, yeah. and I, I think he's right. It's a, it's a great observation he did. It's, I think it's right. That's a lot of chaos going on when we're going on stage. There's a lot of chaos going on when we're deciding to record an album, you know? So um, it's that energy, I think, that brings people to our shows. And maybe that's why the concert went the way they went um, after those two years, you know, when when everybody was canceling. You know, I think that one of the things that has helped you remain consistent, I thought about this yesterday, um, there hasn't been... Aside from Kai and Michael, you know, coming into the band, there has not been a lineup change since 2005. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, you know, you have been in the band for 20 years. And then obviously you had the drummer situation early on that was kind of a little bit chaotic. Mm-hmm. But then once that once you ended up getting Danny into the band, this band has been pretty stable and has remained together. Mm-hmm. And I think that, mm-hmm. in my opinion, that has helped the consistency and really has when I look at the band live now compared to say when I first 
met Andy and Waikie and everybody 25 years ago, it's night and day. I mean, the chemistry between everybody is just so it's so much better, but you know, you guys have been around and playing together for so long. I think that has mm-hmm. helped out your consistency factor and Halloween's a little more that's, diverse that's of a so band true, yeah. than most. And I think that's why they appeal to so many different people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I was saying. You know, I mean, there's, there's musically, there's rock music meets heavy metal, you know, it's, it's like everything in there musically, but then as you said uh, as well, um, it's the same face as being around, you know, so people can, can rely on, 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 so to say the product, you know, so, yeah. and, um, and, and, and music is about vibe and emotions and, and to do that in a, in a, in a certain way, you have to have a great relationship with each other, you know, and, sure. um, we have that and, and we have worked for that hard, you know, it's not easy, you know, especially, in, in a band like ours where you have like like lead characters you know it's not like normally in most bands you have like one lead character or or maybe two and and the rest is just there and comes and goes you know but but um with halloween and 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 that's what i was observing as well with a lot of like really big bands it's the same same way you have a lot of like lead characters and to to do that together in peace you need a lot of social intelligence in 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 our band you know and and i i think we've been working hard for that and also we have a um, i must say also great management that was is part of our family as well which was helping very much as well like in there were certain times when when um communication wasn't easy you know it's it's you have to learn it especially when i joined the band Mm-hmm. There were so many things broken. I could see clearly from the beginning. This is something um, that's going to be hard work to have like a great relationship with everybody, you know, because yeah. there was, of course, when when you when you split up with band members, um, there's trauma, you know. It's it's like a real relationship split up, and and you have to go through that, you know, and emotionally and. As I said before, music is a very emotional thing, and and it's vibey, and you need a great vibe to be good music. And and when I joined the band, there was there were so many um, things still broken, and there was so much trauma around, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And and especially Marcus, Andy, and 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 Vicky, they wanted to fix that. They wanted to to have their band, you know, and. And, and so when, when we had this new management coming in, um, they were helping us with that as well, you know? Um, so to have like a big family, um, communicating a lot, you know, and, and communication is the key there and that helped a lot, you know? So, yeah. Um, and on, on that basis, we could create these albums throughout the years, you know? Sure. Um, that we have to develop a great relationship with each other. You know, I can agree with you because I remember when a lot of that happened. And I remember when Waiki was talking to me about you when you joined the band and, you know, pretty much I felt, I felt this like excitement out of him, like a little bit of a, a more, po- a much more positive energy than, than before. And I think it was, it was when you joined the band, It's interesting. I went back and listened to Rabbit Don't Come Easy, which is the first album you played on. And Mm -hmm. I'm still with all the stuff that you had that had to be dealt with, you know, the drummer getting sick, then getting Mickey D to come in and play, you know, play the songs. That album turned out really well. And in fact, I think the songs that you wrote and contributed, it's we have this saying here, like, you know, just hitting it right out of the gate, which means that you come in and you just make this big impact in a, in a very good way. And I think you did that with the stuff that you wrote and, and talk about that first record, because that was, you know, they had, you had to split up back in the day and obviously you have new people coming in, but you managed to put out a pretty good album and, you know, maybe talk a bit about for you first coming into the band and what it was like for you, you know, back then, mm-hmm. because I remember us talking and I was really excited. We got a new guitar player and stuff. But then when I heard the album, and I heard some of the stuff that you wrote on it. I was really like, man, this guy, it felt like you'd been in the band for years, to be honest with you. 
Mm. Um, well, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think talking about the album, um, I, I know back then because it, it was um, it was such a traumatized um, vibe in the band. Um, fans were feeling that too, and and you know, and 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 the fans were were um, used to the lineup before and 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 you know and and so the the album wasn't very well received by that time when it came out but um i think looking back at it and and listening to it um i think i also think it's it's a very good album um mm -hmm. and and it it comes down to what Mikey wanted by that time. It comes, you know, the first, uh, I have to say him and I, we have this like very um, strong bond and connection from the beginning on, um, from the first phone calls we had, because uh, we, we kind of like the same things when it came down to, to music, you know? And, and he's also a very open-minded guy. You know, that's, that's the funny part about Halloween is that, there there is this metal band halloween but you have band members who who have different roots you know like a lot of bands in the 80s by the way that's that's what a lot of fans don't don't realize that a lot of bands that came up in the 80s they have the roots in their 60s in the 60s and 70s music you know it's there there was no heavy metal around so and and because I wasn't growing up with heavy metal music. Um, we had a special bond from the beginning because we liked um, certain types of music that is not heavy metal. At all. the same time, we, we both, because um, um, we both liked um, the same guitar players, we both liked the same type of music. Um, we know what it was about. And, and also I got to um no halloween before you know so i know what the music is about and and he told me that he wanted to go back to what halloween was to be more traditional and writing great rock songs and great heavy metal songs you know and sure and so understanding that helped a lot and then there's another factor i think it's very important um my ego by that time was very low you know i didn't have the ego as a like i didn't feel like a guitar player anymore by that time before i joined halloween i i was kind of quitting the metal scene before you know um and i was producing and, and working with pop music artists and i i wasn't in the scene anymore not not even visually everybody could tell i wasn't there anymore and so that helped as well because I had absolutely no ego to be some metal guitar player that is in in um, competition with the other guy in the band. And I think they had that situation before, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's a killer, I think, for for any social construct. You know, if you it it can be it can be drive as well if you have like if you have a little bit of competition sometimes but that competition was maybe more in in songwriting you know and for me it was mind-blowing meeting andy and and Vicky who are in in my opinion brilliant songwriters you know and andy was blowing me away with his demo work already you know like his demos were almost sounding like a whole production and yeah and 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 he could he, he can play pretty well guitar as well. You know, he can play guitar, he can sing, he can produce himself. That was, that has, that had a great impact on me. And so I, I was feeling that huge talent in the band, which was kind of pushing me to write good songs. And that was also like, like he said back then, he told me, listen, I need someone that I like and I can play guitar with who would sit down with me in a room and just play guitar and also who can write great songs. That's the job description. Um, I, and, and then I have a few funny stories from that time because, um, the first talk we had, I was kind of, I was in a rush, um, because I, I, I had a, um, date with a girl that day and, uh, which was very important for me. And, 
And so, and he called me up suddenly and I wasn't prepared, you know, it was like Charlie, Charlie Balfour he called me before and told me um, that Halloween is searching for a guitar player. And then he would give my number to, to uh, Vikey and probably Vikey will call me up some, some time, like in three days or something. So, but he called me up 30 minutes later after Charlie called me and I was prepared because I was in a rush to go on that date. And the first thing I told him is, Hey, Tell me what you want because I'm in a rush. I have to go. And <laughs> like years la years later, he was he told me that he was kind of impressed by that by because by that time he was receiving all these these um, demo tapes of great guitar players. Yeah, probably guitar players who who can play struggles around myself. You know, so um, he was receiving all these demos and and then he would call me up and I would say like, hey, just tell me what you want because I, I'm, I'm in a rush, you know, because I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't realizing what was going on by that time. You know, I was, I wasn't into it so much in the, in the, in the first moment and I, I didn't know him, you know, and, and I, I didn't think about it. I didn't have time to think about it. So then we decided to talk more often and that's where we created this bond which is still lasting you know he's he's now in in berlin we're hanging out these days before we go back to on tour you know we have, we have a great bond since then and and i think that was the basis for for me to join the band or, or be in a band you know and um and then when it come came down to songs it was the same thing he was like giving me the whole catalog of of halloween's music and then he was telling me stories about every album about every part so um i, I would say like like his story historian um telling me um what was going on by the time how did he feel you know like very emotional stories because he's really certain about about things you know it's like really specific when he's talking and and I like that. And then humor played a big factor as well. He's funny as hell, you know. He's a <laughs> he's a really quirky, funny guy, and 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 always thinking around the corner. If you like that, um, you really like him. And and so I, yeah, and and that was for me very exciting. By that time, I didn't even I didn't think about the size of the band. I didn't think about what that meant to join the band for that album and it, it, and also i wasn't planned to join the band you know it was more like hey i need someone i can play guitar with and maybe we can record an album together and uh, do you have songs can you write songs and you know and and then later on it, it evolved to that hey you're on the band pictures of that album and and in the video and and yeah and songwriting was the chop description and oh we get along and and then, yeah, bam, 20 years gone, you know? And so that's, that's how it evolved, you know? You know, it's interesting. What was it like for you? So this new album, I think, was absolutely amazing. And I think that, you know, I know years ago, you were sharing a stage with Gamma Ray for a little bit, you know, with Gamma with the Devil, in, you know, playing a couple songs together. But now you bring Michael, Kiski, and Kai uh, into the band and you guys write an album and what was it like for you to write songs for you know for multiple singers and you know you wrote some stuff for you know with Michael Kiske in mind and and Andy in mind and, and talk about that process was it different for you or did you just write and it just naturally came 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 together for you I think the energy was different but that comes down to being seven guys instead of being five guys and also before before um we, we developed this consistency like you said before you know we feel uh, and, and the same went down with uh, recording albums and writing songs it was like we just knew what each other was doing and with kai coming back to the band there was this chaotic factor coming back as well you know which which i really like because it's it's also opening doors that i wanted to open sometimes and couldn't and and he does that and um so there's always something unexpected coming in and and i like that for 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 this record you know you would expect something and it would happen differently and and i like that and 
And, you know, and Michael, the same I said about Vicky, I could say about Michael Kiske, um, like from the first meeting on him and I, we had a very special bond. Like we were instantly sitting together next to each other and, and we've been talking for two hours or so. And, and there, um, and for me, it's all about the vibe. If I feel bad, I, I couldn't write music, you know, and if I, if I don't have a good vibe, I, I couldn't, um, create something for, for a record. And, and with these guys, you, you certainly can, you know, it's, um, having, having a, a good bond with, with a singer you write a song for is, it's just great because you need trust, you know, you need tr tr to trust each other, you know, and so um that happened you know that that helped a lot and um but at the same time the old guys you know like like i, I finished best time for for instance i finished with andy together it was like something we never did before in 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 almost 20 years we we um we, normally we would send mp3s to each other you know and then we we would work on like little bits and pieces in certain songs, but we wouldn't like sit down together in one room and trying things out. And, and that happened for the first time as well. Like Annie and I would sit in a hotel room and, and finishing a song together, you know, and, um, as a team and, and I like that. So I think the whole energy, the whole vibe we're having now is, it's, it's, it's just great. You know, it's a very inspiring, and and that helped the album as well. I think there's definitely uh, a a positive energy that I can tell you that I've never you know I can feel vibes from people and the pos there's such a positive energy from the record and even from the live show and even seeing you guys it's it's like it's there it's like you know there's always been that in my opinion, as long as I've known you mm -hmm. and, and, and some of the guys, but I think with Michael Kiska, you know, when I interviewed him, it was funny. He, he said, one of the things that he said to me was that Halloween, you have seven extremely different people that get together mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. just works. And I think that's interesting when you think about it, because I never thought of everybody that way. I mean, I don't know Kai that well, but from everybody else, it's everybody's different, but they get, you get together and you make these records and play shows and, everybody's pretty happy. I mean, I, I, yeah, you know, you know the funny part is the, the funny part is, um, I, I don't want to be too esoteric about it, but, um, there's something about, if, you know, we, we like the situation with the dramas we had before. Um, um, it, it, I think it wasn't working because of the characters, not because of the abilities. You know, like, I mean, I mean, Stefan was a great drummer and, and, and also Mark, he was very capable of, of playing the drums, you know, and, but I think to be a Halloween member, you have to be quirky in some sense and being weird and different. And, <laughs> and, and it's like a bunch of weirdos doing music together and, and really i think that's the case i think that everybody of us is like we, we we're calling ourselves halloweens you know we're, we're halloweens it's 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 that way you know everybody's different but we're not it's it's like how can i describe that um it's really like we found each other it's like a certain type of humor it's a certain that's actually i have to say that's like the biggest glue in the band as well you know like like for instance, you said Kai before. Kai and I, we couldn't be more different from each other. We were like the totally opposite, like everything, you know. But um, the humor is the clue here, you know. We it's sticking us together, and then also the, a certain vibe, you know. There's a certain vibe within the band and in the combination of characters that is creating something that only probably only we can create in that in that sense you know yeah. um and 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 you know also like things like being cringy like doing is a, is a can be a very cringe band as well and 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 that in a metal scene is almost impossible um 
but for some reason we can do that and and i think it comes down to the characters and to the energy we're creating and then taking that a step further um you know there's keeper of the seven keys we want we said like what it, it all just makes sense and it's falling into place it's like seven keys that created that album you know yeah and and you know uh, i i don't say like from a scientist scientific um um perspective it's probably nonsense but <laughs> you know but but i but i really believe that there's some some vibe we're creating together and and because we're we're so different characters at the same time we're not so different like from what it's important to us you know mm -hmm. like like i said before like kai and i just we find the same things important although we're totally different yeah it, it it's like I said, when he said that to me, I never heard anybody put it that way. They never put it from that perspective. But when he said that, I completely understood where he was coming from. And, and he, Halloween's done something that a lot of other bands have pretty much failed to do for the most part. You you bring back the old singer, your, other, your old guitar player, everybody's in the band together and it works. You get along, you put a live record out. And it's really, it's hard to imagine now the band without seven people in it. And that's what it's become. And, and what has, you know, you just talked about it a little bit. You know, you bring people together and they have the same things are important to them. Is that what's kept this going and, and really not, you know, because people were saying, I don't know, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? But I think everybody, um, from what I, from what I can see, it's worked in, what is it about Halloween that it's worked for you, but it, it doesn't seem to work for anybody else? Because bands have talked about doing something similar in the past, but it's never happened. I, I think it's the chaos part that we can do, others can't, you know? It's, um, especially nowadays, I see a lot of bands being very much constructed you know like everything is so thought through and people it's really hard for for bands nowadays to to go into risk or doing risky things you know i have the feeling that a lot of people play safe and halloween has always been risky i mean just take take the whole catalog of music you know um doing something like chameleon doing something like um the the dark ride you know even even the rabbit album with this like fluffy rabbit on on the front cover you know something like that um it's it's very risky to do those things you know or keep a three the legacy um yeah. was a very risky thing to do you know because of course a lot of fans um would be suspicious about it but um we always have done risky thing things in the band has done it before i even joined you know and and i, I also think in also in the beginning like you know the pumpkin calling yourself halloween um making fun of yourselves you know um don't taking everything so serious you know i, I think that's what a lot of bands don't do because they don't want to be risky and 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 i get it i get it and it, it's not easy it's not easy to do risky things and also the older you get the longer you're doing this it's not very easy and then to grab the essence of what your band is you know because even within a band you you can have your own reality you know it's not like that what you think your band is 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 in fact what what people like about your band you know and you have to kind of learn that you have to that's what i like about nowadays that you can communicate with your fans and that you can feel their vibe as well and you know you kind of you kind of you have get get the feeling of what they really like about your music and and i i get messages every day about people writing about what song is touching them what 
um, what live show, what they liked about the live show, you know, and so that that helps a lot to understand what the band is about for for yourself as well, you know. And I I, I think combining all that together, um, I, I can say it's it's the risk we're, we're always taking. Like also like bringing back reuniting with Mike Kiske and, and Kai Hansen um, was a risky thing to do, you know. And and with it and 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 creating this record, the same thing, you know. I mean, um, there was of, for us it it didn't feel like a lot of pressure, but but of course later on we we figured that there was a lot of pre pressure and that also um, people were ex expecting a lot and to feel fulfill that it's a risky thing to do, you know. Like you could also stay away from that and and say like, oh, let's just play live. Don't do it. And don't do a record you know it it can just go wrong you know and when we we took the risk to do that and and probably that's that's a that's the key for our success I'm, I'm not saying that's the key for success in general but for us you know well i think when you talk about consistently uh consistency i think halloween has consistently taken risks and i think people are now used mm -hmm. to that yeah absolutely absolutely so you have, you're playing in the U.S. next year, um, and mm -hmm. obviously the U.S. is a little bit different for you guys because mm -hmm. you're not playing huge arenas like you would be over. It, it always, mm -hmm. and for me, I've always, I've never understood because not just Halloween, but you know other more power metal rock bands from Germany, aside from maybe like the Acceptor Scorpions or somebody, a lot of European bands that play the type of music that you do generally it just never caught on as much as i think it should have and you know what's it like for you to come to the u.s because it's a big country especially it's much more difficult to plan a tour with everything going on today and you know talk about your upcoming tour playing here. you're playing quite a few shows actually yeah yeah so it's going to be for us it's going to be a pretty big tour there this time um so my thoughts about the u.s there um and our music um i think um it's a, it's like you said it's a big country and and i i think you have to appear more often to um create some vibe and then also i think that that's that's always the that's always a thing i never quite understood that in some countries um, you're creating that energy on stage and then each tour it's going to be more people and um, it never happened for us quite much in the US but also we I have to say we never toured that much in the US like we did in other countries you know no. and that might be a, a, a factor and then also talking about emotions and vibes I think um, in some countries and, and I can tell I'm, I'm German you know here in Germany I when when I see shows people are very different from our Latin American fans, you know, mm -hmm. um, it also comes down to the vibe and the emotions of, of people, you know, and, and, and maybe it's a, it's a different vibe in the U.S. Maybe there's a different, uh, of course there is, I mean, people are different all around the world. There's a, I think there's a different vibe when it comes down to, to music, what, what people like and what, they feel like it's it's touching them and and i think our music would do very well in concerts there i, I mean if a lot of more people would come see our shows they would i i'm pretty sure they would really dig it you know but um just from the music and from never appearing much there, um i think it, it would be pretty hard to create a vibe in the u.s for for that type of music not only for halloween i think like you said before other bands in that genre i think it's 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 very hard for people to grab the essence just out from having some dude playing them a song of his favorite band in a car you know right. uh, i think it's it's the live shows that that would break there you know and i and i see that i saw that happen for a lot of european acts when they made it in the u.s it was because of the live shows, you know, and uh, it's never happening otherwise. And, and then, you know, I think 
um maybe this time because it's it's a longer tour uh, i think it's, it's it's the longest we ever did since since i'm in a man um i'm i'm really expecting a lot this time because um the live shows will help to transport the vibe on the music and and also i saw it's it's like pretty good good um venues you know um yeah um maybe maybe this time the album helped a little bit as well you know to promote it but as you said it's a it's a huge country you could you could start a tour and in the end of the tour you could start the other way around and and, and maybe maybe that's a big factor that that it's not so um easy playing bigger shows there you know but but on the other hand you know when you're starting out playing music i mean touring the whole world is is something that is i still sometimes have to pinch myself that it's just really happening you know it's um there are a lot of bands they don't even come to the us and play there you know because it's it's just impossible um financial financial and and log logistical wise you know yeah and so <laughs> so i'm really happy that we're doing it you know and 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 we have fans there we have we have, we have a great fan base there you know i can see that on the internet and um so i'm really happy that we can can come and play you know the other thing about the us too it's there's so many when you talk about people being different everybody from each region of the country is different like where mm -hmm. i like where i live for example everybody here is much different than say playing down south or playing out west like in california everybody yeah it's like their i own, can tell yeah it's this whole different it's a whole different yeah. culture everywhere i i can tell i mean even even in a small country like germany we have that like the north and the south is like very different you know just yeah. just like in the u.s as well like east west north and south is it's different and and it's i i can tell and and yeah so you have you have, you have a different vibe and and would would some people your music vibes more and that's and that's natural um and and that's that's what what's making it so exciting you know and then on the other hand um like in the last couple of years we've been like really spoiled you know like we also we you know they're we did the Rock and Rio show, for instance, and we we did this tour with Scorpions and White Snake, you know, in in, in Latin America, which is which is crazy, you know. We're doing these tours, and 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 now this tour we're playing we're playing arenas, so we're pretty spoiled. So, on the other hand, I like that we're coming back and, and playing smaller venues as well, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's very exciting, you know, and so so there's always something good about about things. I, I actually, I don't, I, we're not doing it to play arenas, you know, it's not like we're, we want to go on tour just to play the big shows and then saying in some interview, Hey, we're just playing the big shows, you know, we're an arena band, you know, but it's, it's always exciting that, that it's so different, differently, you know, also when we come to Asia, it's different, different as well, or Eastern Europe, it's, it can be so different, you know, and, and I like that it's, and it's, Every time I go on tour, it's it's mind blowing. It's really, really like something going on and meeting all these like different people and and yeah, it's it's almost hurtful to see um, how with music this works. You can like travel everywhere, playing the shows and seeing people laugh, have fun with your show, um, singing the songs. And then it's almost hurting to see that the whole world doesn't work that way, you know, outside mm -hmm. of music. And that's, that's, that's really, um, every time, um, hurtful for me, uh, coming back after tour and, and, and realizing that. So, so I'm really grateful that we, that we can come and play in the US and we can play in Europe and we can play in Asia. It's, you know, it's, yeah. I, I like that. I, think I like seeing people standing there in freedom, freedom and having a good time, you know? I think people, when they come see a show like that, that's their escape from a lot of the stuff going on in the world. And I think people, Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, that would be my escape. You, you know, like when I come home, I don't, I don't turn on the TV. 
I don't, the first thing I do is put a record on and I just kind of block the world out for a little bit. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, when they go see a show, especially when they weren't able to do that for quite a long time, I I think that it it really kind of brings some positivity back for them. And, you know, our bands are finally being able to tour, but, and I think that's their escape. Yeah. You know, uh, I recently, I, I compared it to going to church, you know, I, I, um, I had the feeling that like, if you play a show and, and there are like thousands of people being together, it's like going to church and, you know, like having this moment together outside of, of the real world out there, you know? Come, yeah. coming to coming emotionally to senses because i think a lot of people they don't feel themselves anymore um during the week you know and then um going to a show is very therapeutic maybe you know yeah so therapeutic i think that's I, I, yeah, yeah therapeutic yeah. yeah it is I, I can tell you man I, I can tell you the last time that i saw you guys um and I can kind of, I can attest to this because I had some, something pretty bad happen to me and I showed up and it was like about four years ago. And I remember seeing you guys and it was like, it just completely made me forget everything. And that, Mm -hmm. that to me is what happens when you go to a show. It, It really is. When you go to a show, you're not thinking about, you're not dwelling on anything negative. All that stuff is sort of blocked out at least for a couple hours. And I think people, gravitate to that because Mm -hmm. they they're so sick of a lot of there's a lot of negativity out there unfortunately and we get it thrown at us every day on social media and then on the news and you know all these other sources so when you're able to get away and like i said you know playing music when i get home is like therapy it just Mm -hmm. calms me down and any tensions that i i'm thinking about in the world go away at least for a time and i I can collect my thoughts and everything. So I, I, get, yeah. what you're, I get what you're saying. And, and uh, I, I agree with you that. I, I, actually, I actually really think that that live shows is, is I really believe that, that it's, it's, like, it's like going to church for people because people don't do that anymore nowadays. You know, like religion is, is dumb some, in some sort of, you know, not, not mm-hmm. all religion, but uh, don't want to get too specific here, but what I want to say is that I think people need that feeling, being with others together, have, feeling the same vibe, yep. you know. So and and you know, like hundred years ago, people had that probably when they were going to church, you know, and uh, going away from their daily lives, and 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 then they they were certain that day everything is gonna be all right probably and more or less and and they would get absolution and whatever you know as i said i don't want to go too specific here but but i think the concert can do me the same thing you know it's like people don't have that anymore nowadays they don't have anything to believe in anymore you know and whether it makes sense or not it's just like it's not happening anymore yeah. People doing that less and less, you know, and so, but I think that we need that. I think we need something we can rely on. I think we need some anchor points in our lives that keep us sane. And I think music's a part of it and going to a show is a part of it. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's like the last thing people are doing still. Uh, that, I was kind of worried during the pandemic that this is, stopping um because i was thinking i was i was seeing people like in five years only sitting there with vr um um, goggles and watching some some um 3d shows with some music playing but then um i I was really happy seeing that people still go out on shows because i i really think they need it um it, it, that there's an energy when you're with people together in a room that you can't create from home that you can't create on the internet it's not the same it's it's not it's and, and i that's why i'm comparing it um 
to to a church you know that's like there's a certain vibe when people come together and they're feeling the same thing you know if, if they believe in that moment they believe in the same thing if if it's whether it's happiness or 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 like pure dark energy if you go to a goth show or whatever you know whatever you want to feel but you come together and have to have the same vibe and and that's something you just can create in one room together you know and and so i'm happy to see that people are still doing that and and i i think you can't create that virtually no you can't there's an energy people give off i remember the first time the first concert i ever photographed i i never thought i had never thought of this but i turned around because you're in the photo pit in front of you know between the band and the crowd and i turned around and i see you see all of these people most of whom don't know each other but it almost feels mm -hmm. like they have known each other for a long time and that's that's really what a show always seems to do for people mm -hmm. absolutely yeah so a couple more questions before we get off here. So the, the one mm -hmm. uh, you picked the song best time for a single, which I think was a very good pick. Actually, I really liked that in the alternate version of it, which is, which is really nice. Um, why did you guys decide to pick that specific song? What do you mean? Picking it, picking it for a single, like you're going to put it out and. No, the, the first single was actually fear of the fallen. Um, yeah. That was the first single, and then we we um, had Skyfall coming, and then and Best Time was the third single we yeah. we, we put out. Um, you know, I, I think a Fear of the Falling was was a was a great start for people to show what the album is going to be about, sure. um, and that they can expect some traditional um, metal here, and and get, getting a glimpse of the production, you know, and then. With Skyfall being this like monumental um, piece of art, you know, um, um, everything was already said, and then of course, like we always had these these rock songs on our albums, and and so best time was was the perfect choice to be a third single um, in in like having a song in the row. I would say in the row of of um, Sharon, I want out or Justine, you know. So, um, and that's why we thought it's, it's a great pick to, to bring it up later, you know, also for like, we've been talking about vibes before it's, it's, it was a great, a good time to put it out by that time, um, just before summer, you know, because when I was writing the song, I was imagining someone sit in the car, turning, turning, um, the music up, you know, and, and and go fleeing away from sorrows and whatever, you know, and, and, and listening to the, to, to a song like this and, and just moving on. The whole song is about hope, you know, about hope and stepping into the future and leaving the past behind. So, yeah. um, so it was a perfect pick, um, before summer, you know? Absolutely. Well, I'm going to end off the interview here. Um, I do, you know, Sasha, I really appreciate you taking some time with me today. Um, it's always nice to see you and, uh, any last words for any fans that are going to be checking this interview out here in the next week? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I'm guessing that there are a lot of um, fans from the U S as well. And, um, so I'm really looking forward to, to the shows there. And, um, yeah, I, I'm sure you will, we will come too as well. Right to a couple of shows i'm going to see you you will my son and i will come see you yeah oh perfect oh perfect that's yeah. great man yeah no I, i'm i'm really looking forward to to come to the s and and yeah see you all there hold on one second